This presentation gives you a quick start on how to use SSH with OpenID Connect. The motivation for doing this is to enable federated access to shell-based services, meaning that you can use federated identities that come in via OpenID Connect for shell-based services such as SSH. Our solution provides clever and client-side tools we work with standard and unmodified SSH software. We use OpenID Connect access tokens for authentication and authorization. And optionally, we manage the local identities, meaning the user accounts. As a user, you benefit from using a single sign-on. You do not need any additional service credentials. SSH key management becomes a thing of the past and prior registration is not necessarily required. As a service provider you have the typical benefits of federated identity management, meaning you offload the identity management uh, to the home organizations where the users come from and you offload the authorization management to the federations, to the virtual organizations and the HPC projects that are authorized to use your resources. Um, our solution bridges the gap from federated identity to local Unix accounts uh, by providing a mapping from federated identities to local Unix accounts. There are plugins uh, to allow for custom mappings here. The solution supports the full life cycle of the local accounts in that it uh, creates them when the user arrives, it updates them when the user arrives again with different attributes and the suspension is enabled for administrative accounts in case of security incidents. The OpenID Connect based authentication gets SSH keys and passwords finally out of the way. There is no need to use them any longer, even though the solution works nicely uh, together with existing keys and passwords if you want so. The solution is plugged in via PAM, the pluggable authentication module of Unix, and this means it works very nicely with existing multi factor authentication if you have them installed. Our approach uh, consists uh, server-side of a, pl a PAM module um, with OpenID Connect support, PAM SSH ORDC, developed uh, by PSNC in Poland um, and the Polish Praise Lab project. And we install a REST interface on the SSH server or on a server close by that manages uh, the details. This component is Merkley Q, there will be some slides about that. On the client side, uh, we have support for OpenID Connect agent uh, for obtaining the access tokens. Users can obtain the access tokens with any other way, but we think this is the most convenient one. And we enable SSH clients to use the tokens by a wrapper script around them. This is the architecture, so you have the SSH client with the wrapper script, MCCLI, the MetalQ command line interface. That one may use the ODC agent to get an access token, but access tokens can be fed in from any other source as well. Then the, the wrapper first connects MetalQ to um, check if an account is available. MetalQ talks with the local user management interface, if configured may even create a, um, an account and returns that username to the client. Then this wrapper calls the SSH client, feeds in the access token into the password that is then sent to the SSH daemon, to PAM. PAM verifies the access token with Mertle Q. Mertle Q, of course, verifies that with the OpenID Connect provider. And then login is granted. And I want to stress it again, there are no modifications of the SSH client or the SSH daemon. Let's look at the server side in a bit more detail. How does authorization work? First of all, uh, we support multiple different OpenID Connect providers. For each of them, you can authorize your users based on group memberships, which essentially means a virtual organization or HPC projects. In addition, you can base uh, the authorization on assurance. For example, on the Refs Assurance Framework, this uh, gives you the possibility to request a certain identification identity quality of a user. Yet in addition, uh, you can simply authorize individual users by specifying their subject and issuer, or you use external sources uh, so that uh, an external plugin can check if an existing subject and issuer maps to a local Unix user. 
How do we interface to the local user management system? In the real world, we observe a variety of different identity management systems at each site. To support this, we provide an extensible plugin architecture. We have plugins for Unix accounts, for the KIT REC app, and for LDAP based systems. For the LDAP systems, uh, we include an so-called approval workflow in which an administrator gets an email for each new authorized user where he is requested to create the user account for the, for the user. Um, for, the, for the usernames, uh, we also have a plugin system because we need to map the subject and the issuer to a local username. We implement three different strategies to ensure the uniqueness. The first one is the friendly username generator, which uh, tries to use the preferred username if it exists, or a combination of first and last names, which is configurable. There's the pooled user uh, name generator, which is basically using the group of a user and a a number. There's also the external username generator, which calls to an external tool that needs to provide the mapping, which should allow for the general liberty to adapt username creation to the local site requirements. The entitlements and the groups of a user that come in from the Federation are mapped to local Unix groups. What I think is nice to know is the SSH daemon is not modified. The PAM module may be combined with other modules, uh, so combination of SSH keys, passwords, OpenID Connect and a second factor is possible. We have tested this already with LinoTP. Some tokens are longer than one kilobyte and the SSH client only accepts one kilobyte long passwords. If you decide to use it with Mertley Q, there is a workaround because Mertley Q may generate one-time passwords on the fly for the user. We have packages available for all major operating systems. Server-side we support um, basically all common Unix systems via, and they are installable via very simple command lines, as you can see here, and there are more uh, details in the, in the documentation, of course. Let's take a look at the client side. On the client, two simple changes are required to use the solution. Essentially, you need to add our wrapper tool MCCLI, which is an easily installable tool with pip, and you will replace the username with the identity provider. So you see, um, instead of using my username, I simply use the, the wrapper and I provide uh, my OpenID Connect identity with a na short name that I've configured in the agent. For this to work, you need to install MCCLI and the OpenID Connect agent. Again, packages are provided for all major operating systems on the client side, including macOS and Windows. And since everything is different on Windows, we have work together with the PuTTY developers to create a general plugin interface which is now available um, in, the, in the latest version 078 and our ODC agent for Windows uh, ships this plugin which makes it really easy to use it uh, from Windows. So how does this look in practice? For this we have prepared two live demos one showing the usage from Linux and the other one from Windows. We have a live demo server that we will use uh, and this is also available for you to try this. Um, it is available at this domain. Uh, on the web page you will find further instructions on how to install client-side tools and you can simply straight SSH into the server. So if we do a plain SSH without any client-side tools, it looks like this. We asked for the access token. If we do not provide one, because we have configured password login, we are being asked for the password. If we use our client side tools, we have to provide the identity stored to the ODC agent. So the agent gets an access token and MCCLI feeds it into the SSH client. You see, we are mapped to user cool043 um, and we are on this host. How does our identity look like? Um, so you see all my EGI entitlements are mapped to local Unix groups. Sometimes this mapping is too long, so it's cut to match the Unix uh, limit of uh, 32 characters. On this host we are using the local Unix plugin uh, for, for creating the user. 
and um, this looks like this. Get so you see, in the comment field of the user, this plugin stores the subject and the issuer that identifies the federated user associated to this Unix account. So whenever this user uh, makes a mess, it will be easy for the system administrator to find out who exactly this user was. Windows. Here we have prepared a Windows machine that has PuTTY installed and the OEDC agent together with the Windows plugin. After the installation of the OEDC agent, you will find um, shortcuts to add accounts with your federated identities or if they're there you can get for example a token for the federated identity. Since I just booted my Windows system I have to insert my passphrase to, to unlock the refresh token. Takes a while. Here. And I get my access token. Anyways, regardless, I can just use my PuTTY. I have configured the demo server here. And to do that, I enter the hostname and I use the OEDC plugin architecture of PuTTY. So all I do is I add the OEDC plugin command. With this, I can open the shell. And I can see that also on Windows, I map to the same Unix account as in the previous demo. I want to close with briefly showing the list of people that have contributed to this endeavor and the logos of their institutes and with showing you links to more information on the products used and the how to use the demo.